There's a great saying that goes, your salary is determined by your level of personal development. The better you become, the better everything around you is gonna become. Your fitness, your paycheck, your relationships. So if you can constantly invest and say, all right, well, I have a long-term goal that I want to create a gold medal, so I have a certain amount of money I wanna make or a certain life that I wanna live, I'm gonna need to invest back in the mentorship, growing myself, maybe digging into more, i.e. whatever it may be. But the more you can expand, the bigger your paycheck is gonna be. Naturally, it's gonna work that way because, because the more value you can give, the more valuable you are. When you become a specialist compared to being a generalist, you're gonna make more, right? Yep. When you become a local celebrity that is a specialist, you're gonna make more again, right? That's what our aims are, to grow, to grow, to grow, to grow. Assess that, assess the goals, reflect on the long-term vision, break down the goals and actual steps, create a roadmap, okay? Now, let's get smart learning objectives. This is gonna be step two. Your objective is gonna to be to define specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound learning objectives. Any questions on that before I give you some action steps? Yeah, okay. so What action steps can look like for you is set specific goals, for each key skill or area of development that you wanna improve on. Set specific goals for each key skill or area of development in your life. Where do I want to improve on what new skill do I need to learn set a specific goal for that avenue and make that a priority to grow in that avenue make your objectives measurable where you can track your progress I went from being able to sell one person because I was ah, a bit sketch with my selling now I close 10 people because I've improved on my sales skill set or I've improved on my marketing skill set or I've improved in my coaching, or I've improved in my communication, I'm more persuasive, I can ensure that your goals and your objectives are achievable and relevant to your aspiration. Make sure it's in line. If you have a goal out there, line it up very well. Line it up, you should be pointing in the direction of your goal. You shouldn't be way off course. All right, cool, I'm going into the lynch shoe. Then you gotta set deadlines for achieving each obstacle, learning each new skill. Set deadlines. I am going to get into this mentorship or I'm gonna work on my communication or I'm gonna work on my sales tactic by this date. Like for me, I know I have a date on my communication. That is in October, I have to go to Miami and present. So I've been working every single Thursday, 6 p.m. at Toastmasters to improve my communication. My date is set. I know that I wanna to get to West Palm Beach in, 20, in November, 2024. So I've been working to create systems and put everything into place for 2024. I intend to be up on stage in 2024. So I put a, um, everything should be in alignment. I have deadlines, so I know I need to work towards it. It's not just free flowing. I'm just kind of going here, going anywhere. Make sense? Yeah. Now step three, the seven step formula for goal setting. Here's your object. Develop a practical and effective goal setting plan for success. What your action items look like. Decide exactly what you want in a certain area of your life and write it down clearly. Having a vision creates clarity. When you have clarity, you can create a powerful reality. Step number two of the seven step formula. As I said just now, set deadlines and break larger goals into smaller parts. You can need ready for number three, ready for part three. Yeah. You have to create a detailed list of actions needed to achieve your goal. It is your roadmap. You know exactly when you get into a ring, you gotta create a strategy to win, right? It's the same thing with your goals. You got to create a strategy to win. Create a detailed list of actions needed to achieve your goal. Organize your action steps based on the priority and sequence. You don't need to be doing your 10% items before you do your 10x items. As a reminder, your 10x items are the things that are going to turn your life over 10 times, your business over 10 times. You don't need to be putting the 10%, the things that contribute 10% before you do those 10x. That makes no sense. Do you with your 10 X's first, then your 10 percent's after. Organize your action steps based on priority. Identify obstacles, constraints, and work on removing them. On that sheet I gave to you, you know that you have potential obstacles on there, write them down. So you know what could potentially get in your way and we can work on eliminating it before it gets in your way. Number six, take immediate action towards your most important goal. Eat the biggest frog first. Don't leave it, take care of the biggest task first. Take immediate action towards the most important goal. 
I always say first thing in the morning, you are at your highest intent and least distraction. That's when you need to get at what you need to get at. Whether that's your marketing, whether that's building a new program, whether that's completing um, programs for a client or check-ins or whatever it may be. Get your biggest task done first when you're at your highest intent, least distraction. Develop the habit of daily actions that align with your goal. All of your habits should be in alignment with your goal. If you have a goal to be 9% body fat, but your habit is to go and eat donuts on lunch, it's not in alignment. Or, or, or you want to make X amount of money, but you have a habit of when it's time to do reach out for marketing or follow up or attempt to get new leads, you choose to skip that time and watch Netflix instead. That habit is not in alignment with the money that you want. Yeah. Step number four. You got to identify your key skills. Recognize the key skills for success in your field. Identify five to seven key skills that significant, significantly influence success. Five to seven that influence success in your life. When you can get that five to seven, you, look, you can look at that and say, this is what equals success in my life. I need to pour more into these avenues. Or this is the potential one that I need. I don't have it now, but it's on that list. I need to pour into getting it. Acknowledge your strengths. Acknowledge your weaknesses in the area. Know what you need to pour more into. Know what you need to fix up to be better. Focus on strengthening your weaknesses. Focus on strengthening your key skill set. See, when we get better collectively, we have a significant improvement, right? You improved on the weakness. You poured more into the strength. Step number five, you keep up with me getting some good notes over there. Step number five, strengthen your weakest key skill. Improve your weakest key skill to boost overall success and achievement. Ask yourself what skill, if developed, would have the greatest impact on your career. Seek feedback from your colleagues, your teammates, whomever else in your life to identify areas for improvement. Where can I improve? Ken, where can I improve? Blaze, where can I improve? X, Y, and Z, where do you think I can improve in my life? Then dedicate consistent effort to developing and enhancing that skill. Imagine if all of your strengths were just getting better and your weaknesses you were pouring into and you are bringing those up. You're all around, you are all continuous. Yes, continuous learning is a journey that sets you on a path for success. You gotta embrace the race for continuous improvement. And that's how you stay ahead of the competition. You gotta commit to on, ongoing learning. You gotta surround yourself with motivated individuals. Make the most of every opportunity. Any chance you get to learn and grow, take it. Keep rock and rolling forward. Yeah. That's how we get forward. But I wanna open the floor for any questions or concerns or anything that you may have that I can potentially answer for.